hey guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is jennifer thank you for tuning in and in this channel i talk about my lifestyle overseas i basically share information that will be beneficial to somebody out there if you find this interesting do where to subscribe to my channel if you're an od thank you for always coming back thank you for the love and support so far so today i'll be sharing with you the first 10 things you need to do immediately you land in the united states of america if you're coming to the u.s very soon and you're wondering what are the things you need to do this video is for you so relax and let's get started the first 10 things you should do as soon as you get into the u.s the first thing you need to do is you need to get a place to stay immediately in fact you should do this as soon as you get your visa you should start planning on where to stay it might be you want to stay with your family member before you get yourself sorted it might be you want to book an hotel before you start going to check for apartments or you start viewing apartments or it might also be you want to rent an apartment yes it is possible in my case we had to rent an apartment before we came into the US. Our family members live very far from our state, the state where we are living. So we had no option than to first of all book an hotel for a night. So before we traveled, we had already paid for our apartment where we'll be living. That's this apartment. We paid already and we got it online. There are so many websites out there where you can rent an apartment. You can go to Zillow zillow.com they have zompa.com apartments.com homes.com estate.com and so on so there are a lot of them so you go to the website look for the states where you will be staying or the city and there are a lot of apartments you choose the one you like contact the landlord there's a part where you will see they put a contact number you can call them from overseas because in my case we had to call from overseas i won't lie it wasn't easy at first because we had to apply for a lot of apartments and because we were not there to view most landlords only prefer you come to view they want you to see the house first before you make any payment and in our case we did not have anybody to come to view the house for us and it was really difficult but thankfully we got this landlord and he said he was able to do a virtual viewing so when we view the house we had to quickly pay for it and all that so that's how we got our own apartment so it's possible for you to actually get apartments while you are overseas so you just go online there are lots of them like i mentioned and then search the city and then you will be able to contact the landlord and explain the situation of things in the landlord also most landlords will ask you for your social security number because you've not been in the u.s before there's no way you get your social security number so that would be difficult but just come out plain explain to the landlord and they will understand we in our case we did not have our social security number that's why the fact that my husband traveled first for some days to the us but still yes we did not get his ssn so we had to explain to the landlord and thankfully he's a doctor in the same place where my husband is working so it was really easy for us and that's where we got our apartment if in your case you prefer to see the apartment first before you pay you can come and book an hotel for some weeks but it will cost you that's the problem the downside is to cost you the good side is you'll be able to view your apartment yourself you can also do virtual viewing in our case we didn't bother because we're going to stay here for one year if eventually we did not like the apartment because some landlord will give you six months you have to stay there for six months before you leave or you have to stay for one year in our own it was one year so we were like even if we don't like the house or the environment we can easily change after one year right so just put that into consideration because booking an hotel will even cost you more it's not going to be one day two days three days four days right you know you will not be driving make sure you get apartments that will be centrally located that your community will be very Easy. The next thing you need to do is you need to get your social security number. SSN here in the US is very important. It's like your identity. You won't be able to start work without your SSN. You won't be able to apply for some things without your SSN. So it's really important. There are many ways you can apply for your SSN. The first one is at the portal of entry. When you arrive at the airport, you ask your immigration officer, let them know that you want to apply for your social security number and then if it's impossible for you to apply at your portal of entry you can actually apply in person by applying in person you need to book an appointment in the us they have different ssn office in different states so whichever state you are going to you need to call the ssn office in your state they have their number on google so it's very easy call them and book an appointment because you cannot just go to the office and get it done you need to literally book an appointment before you go so 
it's very important then when you get there you apply and then after application they'll ask you for your international passport they will ask you for all your proof of residency but because you have not gotten your green card and you're just coming for the first time you might not have your green card at that time so you use your international passport in our case we use our international passport and it's the form to fill and then they will ask you the address in which they'll be sending the SSN to so it's very important but it depends on you you can as well put the address of your family member or your employer or any place just put a good address because that's where the SSN will be sent to and you know that document is very very important and they'll tell you it will be delivered to you within 7 to 14 working days. In my case, it took just less than 5 days and I got it. So that's the second thing you need to do. SSN is very important. Like without SSN, you cannot do anything. To be honest, I feel like if I knew that I was supposed to apply at the portal of entry, it would have been easy for me because I had to stay for like a month in the US before I got my SSN, which would have been avoided, right? If I had applied at the portal of entry, I would have gotten it easier and quicker. So the third thing you need to do is to get a SIM card. You can get a SIM card on arrival as soon as you while you're in the hotel you can get a sim card it's not like the uk where you can somebody can get sim card for you before you even arrive or in nigeria or in africa but here in the us you have to literally come and here you pay for your sim card in the uk it was free but here you have to pay for sim so card. you need to first of all choose the um, network has strong connection in your area there are a lot of them they have at and they have verizon in my own case i chose at and at first and later switched to verizon because at that time when i came i was desperate i just bought a sim card they asked me for my ssn or proof of residency but at that time i didn't have anything to render so i had to give them my international passport and that was what they used but after a month of using the at and i got a bill of about 100 and something dollars for sim card I had to end the plan at that time and then I got a prepaid SIM, Verizon SIM and now they are charging me about $46 which I feel like is better because I have unlimited calls, unlimited text message and with data as well. For the SIM card, you can either select a prepaid plan or a postpaid plan. A prepaid plan is you have to pay before the service, something like that. So you need to pay monthly both of them are monthly but postpaid plan is after you've used the service that's when you'll be paid but i think in my own opinion i think the postpaid is more expensive than the prepaid because like i said when i got that bill i and my husband our bill was about 230 something dollars which was outrageous so you need to put all this into consideration as soon as you arrive at the US. You can actually get your SIM at 7-Eleven, CBS, Target, Walmart, Family Dollar, Dollar Tree. You can get your SIM. So the next thing you need to do is you need to get your driver's license. I found that and I've come to realize that it's really difficult for you to commute here in the US as compared to the UK. When I was in the UK, it was very easy for me. I was living centrally. like shops were two minutes walk from my house my son's school school was about eight minutes walk my my work place of work was about five minutes walk and my husband's place of work was about 10 to 15 minutes walk so it was really easy for us to commute in the uk without even thinking of getting a car and that was why i was too lazy to um, learn how to drive or even get a car because it was very easy everything i had was easily accessible but here in the us because first of all when we were renting the apartment we were not here to see the environment so we did not even think of that but in my own case where we are living now although we have an african shop where we can shop for african stuff about 10 minutes walk from my house which i feel like they still don't sell those things that i want and it's really difficult so you literally need to go to town and you need to get a taxi like uber has been eating my money since i came to the us there are times where I'll take my son to school and I'll spend about $30 to $35 a day. So all these things would have been avoided if I know how to drive. And that's why I had to quickly learn how to drive. So before you even come into the US, make sure you learn how to drive. Don't be like me. So it will be very easy for you. Get an international driver's license. But make sure you call your DMV. DMV is Department of Motor Vehicle. Let them know if you can use your international driver's license in the state where you'll be living in the United States of America so that you would know what to do, how to get a car or how to get your permanent driver's license here in the US. So those are the things you need to do. For those who do not know how to drive and you want to come into the US or to learn how to drive, 
I made a video on driving in the US. It's just a video before this one. Check that out. I've listed all you need to know about driving in the US, getting a permit, learner's permit, and going to driving school and learning how to drive. So guys, you need to get your driver's license. You need to know how to drive in the US because you feel like you cannot survive here without you without driving because it's going to cost you a lot. Yeah, there are Uber, there are Lyft app where you can commute but it will cost you a lot like i said but if you have your own car you can go anywhere you can go shopping so how to get in a driver's license yeah in the u.s dmv that's department of motor vehicles in every state have their own protocols what they'll tell you in for example california will be different from what they tell you in rhode island or in missouri so you need to put all this into consideration always call the dmv office to get information about your state about your state's requirements getting a car you don't have the form to buy a car there are a lot of car loan company they have auto source they have cabana and so on there are a lot on google you can even ask your colleagues to tell you which is more favorable in the so after that you need to open a bank account from requirements you need your international passport that's your visa to open a bank account you also need your ssn but it will come later because at that time you've not gotten your ssn so you need to explain to them that you have applied but you're still waiting for your appointment so they'll tell you to bring your ssn and um, later on after you open your bank account so you need proof of address and then you also need your contact number so you need your phone number so that's why i said you need to get a sim and there are a lot of banks here the one i opened was bank of america they also have city bank and some others so search your area look for the one that is favorable oh. the next thing is if you've not gotten an apartment at this time you need to start looking for apartment it's very important so to reduce the cost of hotel bills right so you need to start looking for apartment. If you have kids you need to start looking for schools for your kids so that's why getting an apartment is very important so you need to know the distance from your house to the school or from your house to your workplace so make sure you check your google map while you are checking for apartments it's very important because you can get a nice apartment and the apartment will be like an hour drive from your house so you need to check or know where you'll be staying before you start looking for schools for your children like to be easy and to save costs but if you drive even better for you but you start looking for schools for your children what i did in my case was i check the schools close to my house and i got a lot of them apparently the education system here in the u.s is quite different from the uk to let them know our situation and they said we have to come for child screening so after you go for child screening they'll screen your child they'll screen if he has any issue with the ear they just want to know where they'll put him but apparently here in the us they have pre-k they have kindergarten and the kindergarten starts at the age of five or six i'm not sure so in my son's case is going to be in pre-k so after we did the screening then we were told that they'll get back to us so about three weeks later they got back to us but at that time my son was very tired at home he said he wants to start school so we just had to look for a nursery school around and that's where we placed him in the school anywhere we get feedback from the child screening service so you need to know all this because it's really different the education system is really different they're going to ask you for medical reports they're going to ask you for of course your child's document proof of residency your proof of residency but because at that time we had not received our green card so we had to use our visa page and all that so know all this call them and so that they will let you know what you need to present when you go to apply for schools for your children next on my list is apply for health insurance at the time when i came we came newly and we got some information from one of our colleagues and then she was like we should quickly apply for medicaid now that we've not started working at that time so we applied for medicaid i applied for i and my son and then the requirement they need your proof of residency they need your ssn they need your proof of address to know this document you apply online and then you can actually chat with one of the agents if you cannot apply for this insurance so in my case i had difficulty applying online but to call me and then they were able to help me do it so when they did the application on and i received a card and you can now choose your health care provider so that's what 
ID. The next thing you need to do is getting a state ID, a state identification card. In my case, at that time, I needed my state ID for something, accepting my visa page. I don't know why, for some reasons, I don't know. So they wanted me to get an identification card from the US. I did that the same day I did my learner's permit in DM view in the state where I'm living and it cost me about $22.50 while the learner's permit cost me about $7.50 so in all two of them cost me $30 that same day but they, they said they were going to give me the card like within 90 days but thankfully I got mine yesterday guys these are the 10 things you need to know or you need to do as soon as you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video do well to subscribe to my channel if you have not done so and like this video share comment and i'll see you in my next video